who are very, very excited this morning, Mr. Lutz, Mr. Owen Lutz, will be leading our thoughts this morning as we uh, have a great time together. Um, just uh, really, really exciting. Um, and uh, we are going to have, uh, our, of course, our devotional tonight, um, our midweek at rather tonight. And uh, so we'll we'll have a good time together here this evening. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lead us in a prayer, and then um, I'm just going to turn it over to Owen, and uh, and he's going to uh, be our North Star this morning as we have a thought to have throughout the day. Amen. Let's pray. Well, we're just so grateful to be together this morning uh, as your community uh, that you have formed here in Ottawa. We're just incredibly grateful for what your son has done for us in that uh, we have eternal life uh, because he, the unblemished sacrifice, was offered for our sins. He was uh, crucified, was buried was raised in the third day and offered us a new life and we're thankful for that and yet father we are uh we understand that perhaps more so than ever that we are in a fallen world and uh because of that there's so much strife that's going on for a number of different reasons uh, uh, certainly there's a lot of strife that has been awakened because the embers were there on the floor, if you would, and 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 Father, uh, the 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 racism that has come to the surface, uh, um, and people feeling and and, and protesting about uh, the injustices that they have felt. Father, I pray that you really bring about a sense of healing for not only the the nation father uh, but really all across the world it's amazing what has happened literally from new zealand uh to uh all over europe and certainly we've seen here uh in north america uh father we we know there's uh, some anxiety because of the COVID 19 and, and and there's so many people that have uh, are worried about it especially as uh, the so-called economy has opened up and, 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 and there's some that are just filled with anxiety and, and, and Father, just, and just on top of that, people who have lost their jobs. And, and Father, so I, we pray that uh, we can be a great light. Thank you for Owen and his desire to serve. Thank you for the death of Christ because it meant life for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Owen Lutz. Uh, thanks, Tony. Um... So it's funny that you mentioned you mentioned all of those things in your prayer um, because this morning um, we're going to be looking at Jeremiah 29 verses 11 through 14. Um, so just for a bit of context, uh, while you guys go go search for that in your Bible, um, when this scripture is used, um, Jeremiah was a prophet during the end, the last couple of decades of the Israelite kings, um, and so. During this time, um, Israel was a was essentially a fallen nation. They had they were they were all over the place. They were a mess. Um, the Israelites had been disobedient to God. They had slandered Him by worshiping other gods. They were idol worshiping, um, while also simultaneously going to temple and pretending everything was all right. Um, the leaders were not following the Torah. They were not obe obedient to God. There was rampant social injustice throughout the land. And so uh, God sent Jeremiah to be uh, a prophet and to try and turn the Israelites away from their uh, wandering ways. Um, now, unfortunately, unfortunately, this didn't work. Um, and so God um, used Jeremiah to um, kind of predict uh, what was going to happen to Israel, which was exile for 70 years under the reign of Babylon. Um, so um, I find it, there, there's some good imagery here. Um, I find that it relates very, very closely to uh, Moses and the disobedience of the Israelites back when they were going into the promised land. So in a similar way where God prevented the Israelites from going to the promised land for their disobedience, in the same way, God is 
removing the Israelites from the promised land for their disobedience as well. As well. Um, so uh, according to my notes in 586 BC, uh, the Babylons conquered Jerusalem and took all of the Israelites back to Babylon as captives. And so now, uh, as we go, we're going to read Jeremiah 29, verse 11 through 14. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. So this scripture is very hopeful considering all of the doomsday prophecies that Jeremiah had previously spoken about, um, considering also that Israel was now in exile. Um, and so um, I like this because it gives a it gives a huge amount of hope um, for the future of Israel, but also I think it really relates to uh, what we are going through right now. Um, so for the Israelites, uh, God promises them and to us uh, that His plans are good and that we will prosper, uh, that He will give us a hope and a future. So um, in this context. Prospering doesn't necessarily mean gains in wealth or gains in power. Uh, it does not mean that we are not going to go through some suffering, similar to what the Israelites had to go through. Um, but what it does mean, God does promise that he will give us a purpose for our lives, that our prospering will come from that purpose that he gives us. He is promising that when we follow his will and his plan, that he will make our lives fruitful. He promises us, that, promises us that we will have a hope and an end goal that will always be there for us, even as we go and we finish our race. And this is going to come back to the uh, scripture in verse 14. Um, God also tells us that when we call on him, he hears us. That when we pray to him, he hears us. And I think this is a really hopeful message as well, especially during these times where we can feel alone, we can feel uncomfortable, um, that we need to remember that we can always reach out to God. God is, God is near to us, that we can reach out, we can pray to him, and he will uh, bring us comfort. Um, he will make us prosper. Um, and he also says that when we seek him with all of our hearts, we will find him. Now I can only imagine what this must have what this must have meant to the Israelites back then. Um, for them, this would have been while they were in Babylon, while they were in exile, being slaves uh, to their captors, in all the fear and the uncertainty that they were feeling, that they would remember the stories of old, of the generations before them, of their ancestors back in Egypt. They would have remembered who saved them how God heard their cries of anguish uh, while they were slaves to the Egyptians, um, and how he brought them out from under their oppressor's reign. At this, at this moment, when they remembered the stories of their past and they look at the suffering of, their, of themselves and the people around them under Babylon, they would have cried out to God. At least this is what I think would have happened. They would cry out to God. They would uh, show their anguish. He, they would ask for them to, for Him to save them, to restore them to the land they were promised. And in their suffering, they would open their hearts. They would have found the answers to their prayers. That when the time was right, God would come and He would rescue them from Babylon, which would happen, of course, seventy years later. And this would allow them to return to the promised land, to the land of their ancestors. And so uh, I also think that this relates, uh, this, this scripture um, is a beautiful message of hope, um, especially verse 14. So, of course, in conjunction with verse 13, when we seek God, uh, God declares that we will be found by, or we, we will find him when we seek him with all of our heart. 
and he will bring us back from captivity. He will gather us from all the nations and places where I've banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring us back from the place which I carried you into exile. Now, um, I really like this particular scripture because I think it encompasses pretty much the entire idea of the Bible is that um, in the beginning, Adam and Eve sinned against God. And so they were banished from, from the Garden of Eden. But I think most importantly, they were banished from God's presence. And the whole story of the Bible is how God, um, how God re restores us into his presence. And that can be seen plainly here, where God says, when we find him, when we seek, when we seek him, we will find him, and then he will bring us back into his presence. And so I think that is just, it's just a really, it's a beautiful message of hope. And so what does this mean for us right here, right now? Um, I don't know where everyone is at right now. I'm not you. I'm not, I can, I can only imagine what people are thinking, what they're going through. Um, I know that for me, I have felt um, anger, I have felt sadness, I have felt regret, anxiety, fear, concern, all within the past few weeks. So it's an emotional roller coaster to say the least. Um, and I know that during these, these particular times, we can feel overwhelmed and we can get trapped in bubbles of emotion uh, where we feel like we're on an island away from everyone else. But when we are feeling trapped, I think it's important that we remember that when we seek God, God declares we will find him. Not, he doesn't just say that, he declares it. So this is a firm promise that we can hold to, that during times when we feel trapped, when we feel alone, God, and we, but if we go and we seek God, uh, we will find him and he will bring us from our captivity from whatever is holding us and trapping us. Um, and so I think what's even better about the scripture though, is that it also acts as a reminder uh, of salvation, of our salvation. And so this is going back to, back to Adam and Eve. Um, and um, God, it just shows that God really does have a plan. Is that especially for us, I, in the beginning, we are all we are all sinners. We're all caught in this in a cycle of sin, um, and yet God places people in our lives who go and they reach out to us. They find they they find us. They move our hearts, and God moves our hearts uh, to be in a position where we will seek Him and we will find Him. And when we find Him, God goes and He will bring us back from our captivity our captivity of sin. He will bring us from there and into what he promised Adam and Eve back in the beginning. Through Jesus, he brings us back into his presence uh, and into the wonderful love and family that he has created for us. And so um, for our thought this morning, I just wanted to um, remind us that no matter where we are at, no matter what, what uh, we are feeling um, when we seek God, we will find him and he will bring us back. He will bring us back into the light of his goodness, his grace, his mercy. And so I just wanted to uh, remind us to seek God first. Seek God in everything you do. Um, that when you offer up prayers of anguish, God has a plan and he has, he has given us a hope. Um, that goes all the way from Adam and Eve all the way to us here and now. And so uh, this also should act as a reminder of where we have come from uh, because we cannot move, we, we don't want to forget where we've come from. And uh, this was kind of what was on my heart. Um, and uh, I really do hope that, hope that we can go forward, seek God first and see what beautiful things he can do for us in the future.